Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little series I'm putting together, we started off at Olympus on Mars, and we're doing this little bit of a resupply mission up to Phobos. So we took off in the last video, we got into a nice stable 200 by 200 orbit, and we started setting up our plan to transfer from uh, low Earth, or rather low Mars orbit, uh, out to Phobos. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here and jump back into things. Okay, so this was the plan that we set up. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this plan into Interplanetary MFD. And the reason I want to do that is because I believe Interplanetary MFD, uh, since its focus is on Delta V, I can, you know, and I've got the timing worked out really well, I can use Interplanetary MFD to help me ensure that I am hopefully getting the, uh, the cheapest ride over there. So let me go to Menu, Configuration. Okay, that's off. And we're going to go to Course, Target Intercept, Set. And then I'm going to target Phobos. And I'm going to adjust the TEJ, which is the time that we're going to do the ejection. And I'm going to set that according to the, uh, the maneuver date. So it's going, I'm going to click Set. And then I'm going to type 61641, 61641.8941. Eight nine four one. Okay, so six one. Wait, I did that wrong. I don't want that on TEJ. I want that on MJD. So let me redo that. No, I did do that right. Six one. No, I did it wrong. Six one six four one dot eight nine four one. Okay, so that is the eject time. Now I need to do the intercept time. So we're going to go to the MJD of the, the time that we should be arriving, and I'll set that according to our encounter time over here, 61641.9881. Okay, and now what I can do with, with these unlocked, I can adjust the TIN and the TEJ a little bit to see if we can improve our overall delta V values. And I'm just gonna do that at 1x and see how that goes. So yeah, that's helping a little bit. So Transax, you know, got us uh, in the ballpark. And now I'm using Interplanetary MFD to refine the maneuver to make sure, you know, I'm getting hopefully the lowest cost. <clears throat> so we've saved several del Delta V there. So let's see what we can do on this side. That's not helping. And that's not helping. So I think I think we've already got it. And yeah, I just find that much faster than trying to do it all with Interplanetary MFD. So that is... Yeah, I, th I think that's the best uh, cost that we're going to get, um, you know, based on this time. If we circle around multiple times, we might be able to do even better. But, you know, this is what we're going to do for this particular flight. Okay, so let's see here. I'm still a little bit bugged about not knowing exactly when I'm going to arrive here. Let's see. One thing, let's go to the burn vector page. So it's in 16,000 seconds is when we're going to do the maneuver. Let's warp time forward, get closer to the time to do the maneuver. Like right here, this is the ideal time to arrive in my opinion. You know, either here or even a little bit later. What I don't want to do is I don't want to arrive at this time. So like even now would be a really good time to arrive. Actually that would be like probably the most ideal time because then the sun's like pretty much straight overhead. But I'm, a, I'm worried though since we're going to be doing this burn in a thousand seconds. Hopefully the time that it takes us to get up to Phobos will be long enough, but I don't think it will be. I think we're going to end up arriving right in the middle of the night. Oh well. Alright, so I'm going to do auto burn and warp time forward to let Interplanetary MFD take care of that maneuver for us. And that's another nice thing about Interplanetary MFD when it comes to these kinds of things. I do find it easier to use than uh, Transax, even though Transax you know, has the auto center and all that, I still find this a little bit easier. All right, coming up on the burn in just uh, about six real-time seconds. 
and about a 39 second burn. And let's bring up orbit on this side so we can kind of see what's going on. All right, so that's going to be our maneuver. And since uh, since Interplanetary MFD doesn't tell us how close we're going to be, let's look at that in um, Transex. But let me turn the maneuver off. Okay, yeah, so according to Transex, we're going to be about two kilometers uh, away from Phobos, which is fine. It's a very, you know, it's compared to like a space station where you want to be within a few hundred meters. Uh, Phobos is a much bigger target, so we don't need to worry about being super crazy close. All right, let's go ahead and warp time forward, and I'm going to just pick an arbitrary point, like right there where my mouse is at. Nope, over here. I'm going to pick an arbitrary point, like right here, and when we get there, we're going to do a mid-course right about now. So you can see we're currently 11 kilometers off, and all I have to do for a mid-course correction, if I don't want to be, if I don't want to be super fussy about it, is I can just let interplanetary MFD's um, program here take care of it. If I want to try to be maybe a little more fuel efficient, Translation. I can try to translate so that that crosshair is up to the center rather than you know hitting auto burn. Because if I do auto burn, it's going to rotate the vessel over there and then do it. And that extra maneuvering is uh, not fuel efficient. So let's see, what do we need to do here? So a little bit this direction and that direction is helping. I'm looking at the total delta V and you should see our closest approach coming down as well as I'm doing this. So that looks like that's about as good as that's gonna get. So let me do some translation this way. Right now I'm using uh, reverse translation and a little bit of translation this way. So I'm just bumping the translation thrusters rather than you know, trying to have IMFD uh, do all of it. And it's fine where it's at, you know, now our closest approach is 300 meters. So we'll probably have to do that again. So let me set the mouse, say here, maybe a bit closer, maybe here. And we'll do another mid course when we get to that point. Yeah, now we're eight kilometers off. So with interplanetary MFD on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm still in translation. So let's see, we don't need to go that way, we need to go this way, and that way, and this way. And you should see our closest approach coming down as I'm doing these. Just a little bit more efficient than, you know, just hitting auto burn, although it's a very small burn, so you could, you could just do auto burn and call it a day. And we'll go with that. Again, we don't necessarily care or necessarily even want to be at zero on that because Phobos is a pretty big target. All right, let me bring up Orbit on this side and let's do no target. Let's reference Phobos. And let's put that information up onto the HUD. And let's switch over here. So we're about 800 kilometers out still. Periapsis time is about 1500 seconds away. So let's warp time forward. Let's get down to 750 seconds periapsis time. Actually, let's just go 500. Let's go 600. About right there. And let's see how things are looking. So things are looking good. No need to really do any kind of a correction at this point. Let me, let's take a look at Phobos. Rotation. I don't know how well we'll be able to see it at this point, but let's see what we can see. So yeah, we can see it pretty well. And we have a couple of options here as far as, um, you know, doing our velocity match. We can face it and use the retro engines or we can turn away and use the main engines. I'm probably going to turn away and use the main engines. So let's, uh, let's take a look at map and see how unlucky we are, and of course, 
we're arriving exactly at sunset so it is what it is um, and it's not like we can get into orbit around Phobos and wait for sunrise but yeah by the time we get there we're gonna be basically just at sunset so that's very unfortunate all right let's go ahead and translation go retrograde to Phobos here so let me put in some rotation and time warp to speed all that up all right and I'm going to use the velocity match program which I did the last time I did this and crashed but uh, this time we'll do it right hopefully so let's bring up velocity match let's target Phobos and so what I did in the last what I did in the last attempt at this was I brought up our time calculator and we can see that our orbital speed is you know this number it's going to be about that so that's probably not going to change too much we have the main engine selected so if I go you know let's say 580 then this says I need eight kilometers to do my braking burn but I need to add to that uh, some amount what you know whatever the uh, probably whatever the radius of Phobos is which I don't actually know Let's see if we can find that actually celestial body Phobos so what is the radius of Phobos um, radius it's that number which mm, let me see one two So that would be, so if I move the decimal two places, that'd be 111 meters. Three places would be 1,000 meters, so 10,000 meters, I'm going to say. So 10 kilometers. So I think if I add 10 kilometers to that number, I shouldn't have any issue of hitting Phobos. But just to be extra safe this time, let's go when we're 30 kilometers away from Phobos. Then we'll begin our braking, we'll, we'll begin our velocity match. All right, I think that should be fine. So let me also bring up a generic camera on this side and let's look out the back view so we can see Phobos. And yeah, we still have time on this video, so let's warp time forward and do our velocity match. Okay, we're getting pretty close to the number I said. Maybe we'll go in a bit closer, maybe 25 kilometers. Because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to do too soon. All right, let's go, let's go at 20. Let's go, let's go now. I'd hate to make the same mistake twice. All right, so we have uh, a distance of about 16 5, kilometers. If I do this again, 4, I'm gonna table flip. 3,000. I think we're okay. All right, we didn't hit it. So we're pretty much uh, stopped here in, um, on top of Phobos. Translation, rotation. So let me go ahead and rotate around so we can now see Phobos. And there it is, let me see if I can, I guess the orbit's the one that's really bumpy. All right, so now let's go ahead and bring up map. And oh, as uh, luck would have it, we're really close to the base. So maybe let, let's get over towards the base and then we'll probably actually plan on doing the landing in another video because that's, that is gonna take a few minutes at least. All right, let me bring up uh, ComNav and let's look at our information for the Aurora base on Phobos. Okay, so all the landing pads are free, so we want 115.50, so let's dial that in on ComNav. 115.50. There it is. So let's close that out, and let's now select our VOR VTOL, and this gives us information that we can use to uh, get over to the base a bit better. Translation. All right. So... Rotation. Let's go ahead and rotate. I like to have that crosshair 
in front of me because it feels like I'm going forwards when it's like that. And then we'll pitch over the vessel so we can see better here in a moment. And we'll use one of our cameras to help us see outside of the vessel. All right, let's uh, just a little bit of main engine. Translation. And then translate that over. All right. Rotation. Now I want to rotate the vessel over. Probably should have already done this part. Just want to be able to hopefully see the target that I'm, that I'm heading towards. Okay, I can see it. Let me power down this side for a moment. That's the Aurora base right there. And yeah, we're... And, and it is in a little bit of a crater, so... We just don't have a whole lot of daytime at that location. But uh, yeah, we'll head down there. Let's just get a little bit more alignment done here. Translation. Okay, so now we're moving towards the base. We're just about three and a half kilometers away, so you know, not too terribly far, and we can see our velocity vector there starting to come down. And as one last order of business, let's just look and see if we have any good views from our camera. That one's not too bad. That's cool. So I think... I thought I had one more front down. Maybe I don't have that in this. I probably didn't add that to this, to the XR2. I have it in the Delta Glider, but I guess not in the XR2 just yet. But let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, wrap things up here. Let me do a Control S to save right here where we're at. Switch camera views. All right, so we're, we're doing a lot better in this series than we did in the last one. But uh, when we come back, we will go ahead and uh, translate over and touch down on Aurora base at the very least even though we're not landing during the day since they're since we are landing at a base and we do have the ambient light level set uh, we won't be in complete pitch black the idea of ambient light is that the uh, some locations just have like their own light sources so so unfortunately we won't see everything around Aurora base but we will see Aurora base itself and then once we touch down and everything we can always warp time forward uh, through the night so we can see what it looks like during the day so with all that said, that's going to wrap it up for this part. I'll see you in the next video.